Bendito sea Dios, Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. Amen. Dios Todopoderoso, para ti todos los corazones están abiertos. Todos los deseos conocidos y de ti no se esconden secretos. Limpia los pensamientos de nuestros corazones para la inspiración de tu Espíritu Santo para que podamos amarte perfectamente y magnificar dignamente tu santo nombre. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Andy, Bishop in the Church of God, on behalf of the clergy and people of the Diocese of Texas, we present to you these people to be ordained a deacon in Christ's Holy Catholic Church. The Reverend Barbara Van Black Powderly, J. Victor Lamas, Jr., the Reverend Neil Willard, the Reverend Jimmy Grace, Richard Porter, Kathy Heron, Rose Alanis, Cindy Sandoval, the Reverend David Wantland, and Dennis Kutash present to you Jeffrey John Bohansky to be ordained a deacon. Megan Breeze, Tora Breeze, Eden Breeze, and Zion Breeze present to you Jacob Paul Breeze to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Victoria Godding, Charlotte Niemeyer, Myra Wilson, the Reverend Mike Besson, the Reverend Paul Bennett, Steve Gallington and Ruth Trout present to you Clint Edward Brown to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Steve Cratcher, Paul Harris, the Reverend Jeff Davis, Katie Worthington, Bruce Worthington, Douglas Harris, Nicole Gailey, and Dana Cratcher present to you Judy Beth Harris to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Katie Wright, the Reverend Charlotte Love, Aaron Knipp, Kyle Knipp, Paul Fuchek, Leo Lopez, Gennaro Lopez, J.B. Townsend, Pat Townsend, Minnie Fuchek, and June Fuchek present to you Vicki W. Knipp to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Alex Montez and Tan Montez present to you Luz Cabrera Montez to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend James Peavy House, Chris Rotan, and the Reverend Aaron Jean Ward present to you Lissy Rotan to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Francine Young, Christian Love, Alonzo Sadbury, Earl Sadbury, the Reverend Jeff Wood Beth Woodson, and the Reverend Paulette Magnuson present to you Marcia Sadbury to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Jimmy Abbott, Sheila Girth, the Reverend Jerry Sevick, Stella Graham, Heather Van Camp present to you John Van Camp to be ordained a deacon. The Reverend Travis Smith, Heather Weiss, Avery Weiss, Stella Weiss, Sandy Weiss, Roger Weiss, the Reverend Mark Crawford, the Reverend Jim Libertor, the Reverend Liz Parker, present to you Christopher Anders Weiss to be ordained a deacon. Have they been selected in accordance with the canons of this church, and do you believe their manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify, certify to you that, that they have satisfied the requirements of the, of the canons, canons, and, and we, we believe, believe them to be qualified for this order. Thank you. Will you be loyal to the doctrine and discipline and worship of Christ, as this church has received them, and will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? 
sign the declaration that is in front of you. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting these persons for ordination to the sacred order of deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Jeffrey, Jacob, Clint, Judy, Vicki, Luz, Lizzie, Marcia, John, and Chris be ordained a deacon? It is. Will you uphold them in this ministry? We will. Then in peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, we pray to you, Lord Christ, for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord For all members of your church and their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For Michael, our presiding bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth, may thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For Jeff, Jacob, Clint, Judy, Vicki, Lucy, Lissy, Marcia, John, and Chris, chosen deacons in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord that they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord that by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For their families, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one, as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the peace of the world, 
that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. wonderful and sacred mystery by the effectual working of your providence carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation let the whole world see and know that things which are being cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first lesson. A reading from Acts. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait at tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we for our part, we'll devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God.
dressed for action and have your lamps lit, be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt, have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night and near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those servants. Estén encendidos vuestros lomos y vuestras lámparas encendidas, y vosotros semejantes a hombres que esperan cuando su Señor ha de volver de las bodas, para que cuando viniere y tocare, uh, luego le abran. Bienventurados aquellos siervos, a los cuales cuando el Señor viniere, hallaré velando. De cierto os digo, que Él se enseñará y hará que se sienten a la mesa. Pasando les servirá, y aunque venga a la segunda vigila, o aunque venga a la tercera vigila, y los hallaré así, bienaventurados son los tales siervos. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Heavenly Father, as I offer these words uh, this afternoon, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In an essay on the significance of decorative arts, or as Oscar Wilde would call it, the art we live with. Wilde wrote, the primary requisite for the critic is to be susceptible to beauty. This, he says, is for the cultivation of temperament. We must turn to the art that we live with, the art that touches us, not the art that attempts to teach us, he wrote. For the art we live with touches us in a thousand different ways, knowable and unknowable. These visible arts create our mood and our temperament. This is not so hard to imagine. We might think of the arts and crafts movement itself that sought to instill beauty and art in the common everyday life of people might think of a local potter or how a particularly well-made small batch teapot, a plate, a bowl, or maybe even a chair can make us feel when we touch and hold or sit and use and settle and how this might allow us in our very mood to change by the use of these objects. Or how wallpaper and paint can change a whole room. It can make it harsh, or it can create solitude and peace, all for the effect of it all. The point here is not merely about our reception or perception of our surroundings. Instead, it is about the cultivation of an eye, a voice, a hand. Uh, these are for the soul's sensibilities and the soul's susceptibilities. To what God is doing, not to encounter more fine art, not to make us a specialist, if you will, but to have uh, an eye so as to create and make something new ourselves, to participate in a dynamic interrelationship, as theologian Eric Prisivara considers. Our difficulty, of course, is the problem of the mechanical age, the reproduction writes Walter Benjamin, a philosopher. He says, it's where we take the fine art of ages past and we reproduce and reproduce and reproduce until it becomes kitsch. 
This is a process of representation, of multiplication, whereby the original itself is lost. Or maybe we might say mediated through countless re-multiplications of the image. Philosopher Baudrillard called this the simulacrous dissolution into simulacrum. Fancy words for what I just said. But it's wherein the original becomes multiplications disconnected and objectified. When such art we live with, as Wilde put it, is rendered meaningless by endless reproduction. It becomes something we consume instead of being formed by it. Something we might have rather being remade by it, recreated by it, in order that we can become something new, a more beautiful self, a more beautiful community, a dynamic and interactive group of people. See, this touches on the hard work of deaconing. It will be all too easy to think of your work <clears throat> as preaching to the church, to tell people of the poor. Unless it is by church, you mean the streets, and by congregation, you mean the people in the streets. If not, then this is nothing more than a representation, an image made and multiplied for consumption. All too often, such preaching and teaching inside siloed, boundaried church buildings replicates and represents the poor in a disconnected way. It allows a kind of distance, sanitation, a removal from us and them, from us and their environs, the controlled distant spaces that makes us comfortable, sanctuaried, if you will, from the reality of community and the world outside. Bringing a story or a name into church through the words of a sermon for the consumption of the hearer then turns the hearer, the preacher, and the poor themselves into nothing more than buffered objects bumping around with each other. The poor then become part of the ever-present images of people softened by our mind's eye, ex-incarnated, if you will, by our removal of them from the physical presence of community. This is a disembodied poverty, disembodied hunger then, disembodied illness, imprisonment, and death. It all becomes philosophy instead of being located in the people who are hurting and weeping and sick and dying. Make no mistake, Christ's embodiment is no replication of divine economy, but a very embodied God that comes to meet us, to know us, and to live and make his home amongst us and amongst the poor, the wanderer, the sick, the dying, the dead, the searching. See, the hard work of the deacon is to be in the world, to take people with you to live with the poor, the oppressed, the bound, and the sick, and the dying, to spend most of your time with the people in their places, to understand their context and who they are. You must live, you see, with others, to live with the poor in such a way as to develop not a critic's eye, but Christ's eye, able to see to know and be susceptible to their beauty and to see Christ dynamically in them. This is for the cultivation of the deacon and the deacon's temperament. While some of you will be making your way through the diaconate on the priesthood, Still others are meant by God to embody 
This dynamic relationship is a rule of life forever. The truth is, all people are called to this work, to Christ's life and Christ's eye. It's not unique to the deacon at all. It's just that the deacon takes it on as a spiritual discipline and primary missionary focus for their ministry and ordination in the world. It is their full, the fullness of their rule of life. So we, so we must dare, you see, together with deacons and the rest, to have our hearts touched, our guts moved, our eyes wetted, for this is what Jesus dared when he went among them sat on the hill with poor and hungry and saw them as sheep without a shepherd. It is what the disciples did when they saw the widows and the orphans neglected at the distribution distribution of food and did something about it and pointed some to go and deal with that, to work on that, to live with them, to make sure that they ate. Your living with will not be so that we might be taught something new or that we might steal away representative images for a sermon later to be extolled. Rather, you're living with in a thousand different ways is for our and your very remaking, is for your transformation, your reintegration with God and with God's beloved people. Oscar Wilde speaks something then of a gospel truth, you see. Not to just live with art, but to live with each other as beautifully created and recreated community with Christ's eye and Christ's touch. It is such an imagination that might just make the Christian community worthy of the name the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand uh, with me and let us confirm the faith of the church using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, God from God,
mis hermanos y hermanas, cada cristiano es llamado a seguir a Jesucristo, sirviendo a Dios Padre a través del poder del Espíritu Santo. Dios ahora te llama a un ministerio especial de servicio directamente bajo tu obispo. En el nombre de Jesucristo debes servir a todas las personas, particularmente a los pobres, los débiles, los enfermos y los solitarios. As a deacon in the church, you were to study the Holy Scriptures, seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments. And you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My brothers and sisters, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of deacon? Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures? I will. will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? I will. will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family or household or community in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to all people? Amen. Will you in all things seek not your glory but the glory of the Lord Christ? Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord by his grace uphold you in the service that he lays upon you. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, our souls inspire. Thou the anointing spirit art Thy blessed unction from above, enable with perpetual light, <coughs> anoint and cheer our soiled face, keep far our foes, give peace at home. Teach us to know the Father, Son, <coughs> and through the ages all along, praise to thy eternal merit.
O God, most merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. We praise you that you have exalted, highly exalted him and made him Lord of all, and that through him we know that whoever would be great must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries in your church and for calling these your servants to the order of deacons. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Jeffrey. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Marcia, fill her with grace and power, and make her a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Clint, fill him with grace and power, and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Lizzie, fill her with grace and power, and make her a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Jacob. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Vicki. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to lose. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church.
Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Judy and fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Christopher, fill him with grace and power, and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to John. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Make them, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let their lives and teachings so reflect your commandments that through them many may come to know you and love you. As your Son came not to be served but to serve, may these deacons share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You now will be vested as deacons. Also, in front of you, receive these Bibles as signs for each of you of your authority to proclaim God's Word and to assist in the ministration of His holy sacraments. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you.
shining words of victory won inspire our hearts grown cold with fear revive in us baptismal grace and fan our smoldering lives to flame verdad es digno, justo y saludable, darte gracias en todo tiempo y lugar, Padre omnipotente, creador de cielo y tierra. Por el gran pastor de tu rebaño, nuestro Señor Jesucristo, quien después de su resurrección envió a sus apóstoles a predicar el evangelio y enseñar a todas las naciones, y prometió estar con ellos siempre, hasta el fin de los siglos. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Is your name the highest? Is he who comes in the name of the Lord? We give thanks to you, God. It's just funny. My glasses are foggy. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like the new thing, right? Glasses fogging up. I'm sorry to interrupt our prayer, but she's like, can I help you? No, I'm fine. I just can't see anything. <laughs> We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people and your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error and the truth, out of sin and the righteousness, out of death into life. In la víspera de su muerte por nosotros, nuestro Señor Jesucristo tomó pan y dándote gracias, lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos y dijo, Tomen y coman, este es mi cuerpo, entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto como memorial mío. Y después de la cena tomó el caliz y dándote gracias, se lo entregó y dijo, Beban todos de él. Esta es mi sangre del, nue del nuevo pacto. Sangre derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Siempre que lo beben, háganlo como memorial mío. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, remember his death, proclaim his resurrection, await his coming in glory. Y te ofrecemos nuestro sacrificio de alabanza y acción de gracias, Señor de todos, ofreciéndote de tu creación este pan y este vino. 
We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. Por él y con él y en él, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, tuyo son el honor y la gloria, Padre omnipotente, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Amén. Y ahora en nuestras lenguas propias, and now let us pray in our own language, the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Aleluya, Cristo, nuestra Pascua se ha sacrificado por nosotros. Aleluya, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Los dones de Dios, the gifts of God para el pueblo de Dios, for the people of God.
Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Jeff, Jacob, Clint, Judy, Vicki, Lucy, Lizzie, Mercy, John, and Chris may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with them may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Do not pray for easy lives. Pray instead to be stronger men and women for the living of life. Do not pray for tasks that are equal to your gifts and talents and treasure, but instead pray for the gifts and talents and treasure to meet the tasks that are in front of you. For in that way, when anything is finished, any mission undertaken, any ministry accomplished, it will not be the miracle. But instead, you will be the miracle. And every day you shall wonder at the grace and mercy, love and power that has come from God through you into the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.